Okay, we're recording. Go ahead. You're, You're muted. muted. Excuse me. The wrong. Good. Good evening. We'll start over again. So, welcome to the Town Services and Outreach Committee. Um, this is October sixth, pursuant to Chapter Twenty of the Acts of Twenty Twenty One extended by chapter two of the acts of 2022 this meeting will be conducted via remote means member of the public who wish to access the meeting might do so via zoom or by telephone no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the meetings in real time via technological means at this point i'd like to call to order the meeting and I will call on the committee members if you could note yourself as present and heard. So uh, Andy. I'm present. Good uh, you. Thank you. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Shalining. Yes. Okay. And I know that we have and thank you, Jennifer. Uh, honorary TSO member Amy and Guilford and Lynn for being with us. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass the floor to Anna and Amy. Great. So we are going to talk through, uh, I, I know it's going to shock everybody when I say the word water, but um, we're going to talk about water. Sometime I'm going to say sewer and you're all going to just be thrown for a complete loop. So watch out. Um, but, oh, Andy, all ready? <laughs> I just wanted to remind Lynn that I think that there's a quorum of the council sitting here and we haven't called the council meeting door. There's only six. There's only six. Whew. Okay. It's because Amy's a temporary or not a temporary, is an honorary member of TSO. So we yeah, it's it's confusing. Yeah. Shalini. Question when is public comment? an Anika question. Public comment is after the um, the universal efforts presentation. Okay. So after the second. Great. Thank you. Okay. So um so we are talking through the final part of water today. Um, we did the regulations. I want to thank all of you for all of the efforts that you put in. Um, sorry I have a I have a creature who's trying to attack me right now. Uh, and what we need to talk about still is the actual bylaw itself. Um, and so in the <clears throat> in the pro in the packet, you need to stop in the packet. Uh, there was a memo from Paul uh, that talked through the um, the water use regulations and the bylaw. So what we have been working on is the idea of we create a general bylaw that provides for adoption of the water regulations this is instant and amy please jump in if i get this wrong we even met amy and i met about this so like hypothetically i should be correct um but i'm sure i'll get it wrong so we as a council would adopt a general bylaw for water and then another one for sewer that creates the process to adopt those regulations and adjust them as needed um, instead of creating a full bylaw that includes all the regulations, right? So we've separated them out. So we did the regulations. Now we just need to do this bylaw and it's pretty simple. Um, and in the memo, Paul outlines the different ways that similar bylaws have been written in terms of who is who has authority for each part of it. Um, and so what we've talked about is if you're looking at, um, at Paul's memo, we're doing um, option A, or that's what I'm, I'd like us to do. I think that we should do. And then in the proposed bylaw, um, my belief is that Paul got it right, that it should be that the, um, the, the town manager is responsible for the administration, implementation, and enforcement of the bylaw. Uh, and can, is that, is that what we talked about? Hang on, I wanna make sure I got it right. Um, yeah, sorry. So as water and sewer commissioners, we, the council, have the right to change the regulations, but Paul is the person who enforces them. That's the way that the regulations are written right now. So this would be most consistent with those regs. We have it. Um, we have the the enforcement stuff in the um, in the regulations. This bylaw is just aligning with those, and this is what would live in the general bylaws. The regulations would be separate. 
So it's really clearly spelled out in this memo. I'm, I'm just kind of reiterating it in case folks have any questions, but I would like to, um, I'm happy to make, <clears throat> to make a motion, but before I make a motion to um, adopt the, the uh, proposed bylaw as written in the memo from Paul, I just wanted to check to see if there were any questions from folks or concerns about that process. I'm seeing no questions. So we are comfortable. Oh, Amy. Oh, Amy. oh, oh my God, Amy. I thought that was like a major, I was like, no, I thought we were ready. Okay, great. Um, so I feel like I need to do something more formal than make a motion to adopt the proposed water bylaw as written in the memo to the town council from the town manager. Athena, is there something different that I need to do? Um, TSO would recommend the town council Thank adopt. You. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, I move that TSO recommend the town council adopt the proposed water bylaw as written in the memo from the town manager to the council dated February 26, 2022, which reads that uh, the ability to change regulations in the water and sewer bylaw or water bylaws is the responsibility of the, of the town council as water and sewer commissioners. That's my motion. I'll second. Thanks, Andy. Okay, and we will move to vote. Shall we? Yes. Andy. Yes. Anna. Yes. Okay, and Dorothy is not with us, and I am a yes. All right. With that, folks. We have closed the book on water. So this will be going back to council. Um, thanks again to Amy and Guilford. Um, and we will see them again soon for sewer, which Amy and I will meet about either tomorrow or Monday, because I'm emailing you right now. And uh, yeah, we'll see you for sewer, but we're we're good on water. Thanks, y'all. This is exciting. I'm like, it's a big deal. I'm, I'm happy that for once something went through without comment, <laughs> but let's hold on to that enthusiasm until sewer comes around again because there will be questions it's, I'm sure. it takes a lot for me to lose my enthusiasm to be very clear <laughs> well i think actually jennifer has a question no I, i've just never seen anything go through so quickly as this whole process so my hat is so off <laughs> to you i can't to be clear this is a bar we should all try and reach oh, okay all right to be clear the regulations were the much harder part of this process we all there's a reason why this was like oh my god we need the bylaw too all right. Thank you all. Uh, I think I think we are set with Amy and Guilford. Is that right, Anika? I believe Guilford is staying. Oh, with yes. Yeah. Yeah. But Amy, thank yeah. you. Thank you. You're free, well, and it's I six years hostage. Oh, record time. Thank I will you, see Amy. you guys again in another couple of weeks. <laughs> thank you. Again. Okay. So yeah, we're moving. All right. So I promised you 20 minutes, and I like over delivered. So. Yeah, you really did. And, and we started late as well. So fantastic. Okay, so I know that we will have Paul joining us. He should be with us shortly. So uh, maybe what we could do just for a quick minute is go ahead and work in the, uh, the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at the, the minutes, to go through the minutes? Would anyone like to make a motion to approve them? Or I'll move to approve the minutes. Um, was that do you, are you, was that your motion or do you want, sorry? Yes, I, I made a motion. Okay. Will you second? Yeah. Okay. Second. We'll call on the vote. So Anna. Aye. Shalini. Yes. Andy. Yes. Okay, and Dorothy's not with us, and I am a yes. Okay, so we will check that. And I think that, um, Athena, uh, would you agree that we can go ahead and pass the floor on to both Shalini and Andy? Yep, they can They can go ahead and present. Okay. If All you right. need help pulling up documents, <laughs> any, any of you, then um, let me know. Otherwise, I'll let you do your own share screen. Okay. Thank you, Athena.
take it away. Andy, I'll start and then you can go with the plan. So we, I, I just can introduce maybe, um, and then you can go over what we're hoping to accomplish. So th the goal for today's discussion about this was that we present some sort of a plan that all the sponsors have worked with together, including Jennifer and Alicia. And uh, so we want to present that to you and then get your feedback on that. We can have a little discussion about what the different pieces are and uh, and then we still have to attach a timeline to it. But there's some steps that are really urgent and we're hoping that we can do uh, the presentation, a discussion, but then also have some action items that can be taken um, right away. And with that, I will turn it over to Andy. And Jennifer, feel free to also chime in. Okay. Well, um, I'll pick up on a piece and then uh, see if Jennifer is a co-sponsor is anything that she wants to add. But first of all, um, I want to appreciate the time and commitment of uh, Zero Waste Amherst has invested in this process and look forward to continuing to have their input as we consider the bylaw and um, with the, the, the help that I hope that they can provide in implementing the bylaw. I know that there's some questions that have been raised um, about the um, process that has been proposed through the work plan, but I want to explain it a little bit, um, but in first say that um, I asked to be a co-sponsor because I really have been a long time believer in the goals of this bylaw and that we really need to do everything possible to uh, reduce the waste going to landfills from Amherst as our share in addressing a worldwide problem and also um, recognize that composting serves several purposes because it helps to reduce the waste that's going to landfills and it reduces methane that has um, a significant impact on global warming. Uh, and I think that we can accomplish that um, most um, soundly by having the town have a larger role in um, establishing and monitoring the waste collection system. And that's what ultimately the core of the bylaw is about. Uh, there were always questions about the details of the bylaw, and uh, but it was a it was a good starting place because we needed to get something out and to sit there and argue for a long time about what bylaw to propose uh, was something that I didn't think would get us to the next stage as quickly as we could. Um, but having said that. Um, I'm now sort of put in position, and um, I've talked with Shalini about this a little bit, that we're also members um, of this committee, and ultimately all of us who are uh, councillor sponsors are members of the council, and we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing for the town as we go forward. And um, we recognize that our friends at Zero Waste Amherst are advocates and we respect them as advocates, um, but uh, we can't be entirely advocates ourselves because I think that we need to also make sure that what is being ultimately um, proposed to the council is right for the town. And I do think that there are problems that we have to um, look at and um, one that's very important is staff capacity. And uh, Paul and Guilford might talk about that too, but uh, I think that they're, um, as I have looked at other towns and how they're structured, towns of similar size, that the staffing requirement to administer the system, to oversee the um, the fact that it's a now a town service and not a contracted service and to uh, make sure that um, we're adequately informing um, our residents and business owners of what they need to do to comply with it is not 
a simple task. And in talking with um, people in government in similar sized communities that were um, in Massachusetts and on Veronique Blanchard's list of things that are important, that um, it is a significant um, commitment of staff time. And we don't have the staff time um, as far as I can tell, though I think that Guilford and uh, uh, Paul will comment on this uh, more fully uh, to do this uh, without getting some additional staff um, and that that's going to have to be factored into it. Um, I have big questions about the cost. Uh, I still believe uh, very firmly that we can establish this kind of a system and that it can be uh, ultimately less costly than maintaining the current system. Though I do worry that we're creating an impression amongst the community that price will go down. And in fact, it may not go down because um, the tipping fees and other costs that are incurred by waste collection are going up, gasoline and equipment and everything else, um, as well as wages. And uh, all of that's gonna be factored in by anybody who bids on the contract. And uh, uh, so we need to understand how the whole system works. And um, there are questions about how this is gonna be structured financially because we are not a provider of service and um, it's going to call for some restructuring. And finally, um, there's a question of what needs to be enforced and how it gets enforced. And those have to be considered too. So what we proposed was a work plan um, as being the best way to sort of divide it out and come forward. And uh, I, at some point, we will uh, um, we might put it on the screen. It was included in the packet for this meeting, uh, but added very late as a draft. But we felt that at least providing a draft was a good way to start the discussion. And uh, the last thing that I want to say before uh, seeing if Jennifer has anything to add is that uh, one of the things that we can do to assist this is to recognize that the uh, state DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, um, can provide significant staff assistance to us and um, that there's a process to obtain that staff assistance. That's where Veronique Blanchard was involved before. And um, if you notice the number one um, suggested uh, step in the process, is to um, work with um, D, uh, DEP and our staff to try and see if we can secure that assistance. And uh, I know that uh, Jennifer's been working a little bit on trying to assist the committee to be ready to do that um, and get that application moving. And so, uh, um, but, I, but it is the number one step, the first step, and that's the reason. So I guess I'll turn it back to the chair, or to Jennifer, if she's. Jennifer, please. Yeah, or Shalini, do you want to go? Uh, did you want to say something? Because you haven't said it. You can go. Yeah, no, I wanted to, um, but I, I did also want to, want to acknowledge that um, the motion that that was referred from the council to TSO, um, a number E of that motion did say that, um, you know, that we would, we were working towards the town providing directly or through a contract with one or more waste hauler, the universal curbside pickup of trash, recyclable postal material and other waste hauler services. So we are coming at this that we want to select the service and the process that works best for the town but with the you know kind of based on the maybe a premise on on research and what other towns have done 
that we thoroughly want that our goal would be to obtain this, the waste hauling and the curbside compostable pickup and perhaps look at it, you know, and look at a pay as you throw system that would incentivize reducing waste that we would obtain that through a competitive bidding process to get the best service and price that we, that we feel that we can. Now, if at the end of the day that, you know, wasn't getting us what we wanted, you know, we're under no obligation to, to do that, but the, what we were tasked with doing the motion that came to TSO was to be looking at whether we was premised on that we would be able to meet our climate action goals more thoroughly through um, either, con you know, through a contracting system. I mean, some towns do it where the town provides it directly. We're kind of, we're assuming that we're probably not going that direction, but that that, that is part of what we were tasked with when the motion uh, came to TSO. So that's a made, and, and when um, in our conversations with uh, DEP, with Susan Wade at DEP, uh, what, as Andy said, one of the first things that we will do is apply for a technical um, assistance grant. And we sent Susan a list of questions to help her determine which would probably be the best of maybe, I think there's three technical assistance grants available and she suggested the one that um, is about contracting out and contract management, that that would be the most appropriate for us. So, Shalini <laughs> or, or Anika. Yeah, I can add a little bit. Anika, is it okay? Did you wanna say something, Anika? No, 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 this is still, uh, you know, we're still in the middle of your presentation discussion, yeah. so carry on. Okay, so um, so a couple of things like how we where we are right now. Uh, we had last year through zero waste Amherst, they had applied for the grant with um, with Gil, uh, with our staff, and so we already so the first part of what the D DEP. Uh, assistant did was to compare what are the options if our goals are waste reduction and so the conclusion of that particular round of research and that research is included in the packet if anyone wants to go through or even watch the videos so the conclusion of that round was that the best way that uh, Amherst can reach our goals of waste, waste reduction is through contracting uh, and not by starting our own. Initially, it would be that we contract out uh, and the town contracts. And the reason for that is the collective bargaining power. And as Andy said, we don't know what the costs are going to be. However, some of the costs that are going up, like all of us who've gotten our bills recently, our costs have gone up. And that's part of inflation and all of that. So that's going to go up anyways, right? Whether we are with uh, with the town contracting or the individual. So we're not talking about that. Those increases are gonna happen regardless. But what we now have to look forward to, uh, look forward and research, maybe through an RFI or RFP, which we don't know at this point, is that what is that gonna look like when the town contracts? Because now there is strength in numbers and there is collective bargaining power. And so, with that, we are hoping, and that's what we are seeing, at least in Shrewsbury or some other towns that have contracted, that they did get multiple bids from different haulers, even though we have only three in the area. But even the fact that we are putting out an RFI or an RFP at the right time, we're hoping it will generate a competitive bid, and that will add to the other goals that we have of pay-as-you-throw system which means that it's gonna incentivize people to throw less waste and do more composting. So the payment that residents will be making will be tied to the amount that they're throwing out. So we can do that. And the third thing is the transparency in this process. So it's all very clear who's being charged what, and, and we're also able to me uh, measure, uh, I don't know, measure the right word, but to, to see how much waste as an as a town uh, we are actually putting out 
So all of that is possible through this new contracted system. So that's the ideal goal. And now there are all these different pieces. How do we implement? How do we get to that place? So that's where the two is. So the first step is related to us, our, our first goal, which is obtaining mass DEP assistance, which is with Susan Wade. And she will help the staff, she will help us to then look at how to do, move to a contracted system, what will that look like, and um, how to create an RFI maybe, or all of those steps. And then the 2A part is where we go into now develop, going into the details of um, you know, what, what, what I move towards a, con a town contract what are the challenges in that? What, how are other towns doing it? What are the staff needs? Um, putting an R and one of the action steps there is to put an RFI. I'm going to pause a little bit because Andy has his hands up. No, I was. Uh, what I was going to do is to conclude. If the rest of the committee wants me to do so, in the, is to uh, put up on the screen the um, mm, draft work plan, just to give a quick one or two minutes worth of sort of what it's about um, not to try and uh, read it or deal with it in detail, but only if the committee, if that's the committee's desire, then that would be the last step. Please, Anna, what do you think? Yeah, it would be helpful, right, to put up the, okay. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Okay. Etienne, thank you. Or is it Andy, whoever is doing that? Thank you. Um, it's this one. So what you should be seeing on your screen and tell me if you're not, um, see if I can enlarge it, um, is the draft plan. And what we basically try to do is you see the purposes of the bylaw begin the plan, and um, as promised, I'm not gonna read it. Um, the first step is to obtain mass DEP assistance. And um, then um, when we um, have that assistance as part of it, we don't have to wait until we get a result from an application to go on to the next step, but we do feel that that is the important important place to start. Um, then as you move along through it, you get to what we call 2A, 2B, and 2C. And the reason that we call them 2A, 2B, and 2C is that we think that they can go simultaneously. But um, what it is is uh, to develop the um, possible town refuse collection system to make sure that we scale the cost to the amount of trash, which is what pay as you throw is about. And then the third one is the composting. And under each, we started by um, talking about the objectives of each step and they're fairly similar because we're just trying, it's a really a learning um, mode for uh, the committee um, and uh, we tried to uh, define the action steps and um, matters that need to be considered and understood by the council um, in each of those steps. And these are all subject, obviously, to review and discussion. What we did not do is um, fill in the last two columns because um, we wanted, you know, it just seemed premature and we were just trying to get a concept out so that um, we were beginning, we could at least start with a breakout of the, of the work that needs to, to be done, the information that we think that um, this committee needs to understand in order to make a recommendation. And we were looking at sort of CRC's experience and how it's been handling the um, very complex process of amending the, um, bylaw that has to do with um, rental registration and uh, recognizing that it needed a work plan and uh, it, it had to um, be um, proceeding in that fashion. And then the uh, uh, once that is done, 
then we can go back and the way we put it was the next step would be once we have all of the knowledge that we think we have about the system to align the bylaw and regulations um, with the uh, um, that that are being proposed with what we've learned and um, also and again this does not have to be waiting until the end to but to conduct a public input process um, that um, would be proceeding as noted at all critical stages. Um, and uh, we did not attempt whatsoever to deal with the date for um, TSO discussion of any of these issues. I know that uh, advocates would like to see it work as quickly as possible and move as quickly as possible. Uh, I think that those of us who are members of TSO realize that there are lots of pressures right now before this committee and the amount of time the committee has um, to devote to any one of those many um, projects that are um, before in processes that are before the committee is something that the committee as a whole needs to um, uh, assess. So that's basically it. And uh, unless there are questions, I'm going to stop sharing. So I cannot so, see if there are if there are questions. Can you see Andy? Andy? Okay, so that enables me to uh, stop sharing and turn it back. Jennifer? Yeah, no, I just you know want to add that you know, so TSO doesn't feel like it's all on their plate because it certainly isn't to try and you know, do the research and craft the program to get us to the point where we would, you know, go get put out an RFP um, that even just applying for the DEP technical assistance grant that that work will be able to be done. You'll we'll, we'll report back to TSO, but that can be happening, you know, on with the consultant, you know, and the sponsors, you know, and of course there'll be some staff time. But that so work could be happening that isn't all on the TSO committee members because that's would be impossible for you to take on. So we're very we're hope, hoping if we get the technical assistance grant that that will enable the work to also begin to move a little more quickly. Um, yeah, um, Jennifer kind of touched on my question, which I'm looking at sort of for each item. Um, I know you have the column for responsible counselors, staff, and others. I think as I'm thinking about the kind of timing of this all and trying to think about what's reasonable, I'm, I'm trying to break out what you expect to ask town staff to help with, what you expect TSO, not, not necessarily specifics, but sort of what's going to be sponsors, what's going to be TSO, what's going to be town staff. I'm curious. And then actually I wanted to, I'm glad you raised your hand, Paul, because my next question was if Paul had any insights <clears throat> as to town staff time on this. But um, also just, I, I love the work plan. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, so there are a couple things with this. So first, um, this has not been set as a priority for the council. Um, it's not in the goals for last year. Uh, the council would have to, I, I think, should make it as a goal for, you know, it's not mentioned in the last, you know, the, the goals that you adopted in 2020, in December of 2021. So I think before we start, ex before town staff, and I ded dedicate banks expenses, I align what I do in a way we align our resources with the goals of the council. So if the council is going to add this as a goal, it should vote to do that. If it's because I and I'm trying to understand what the goals are. I understand reducing waste and why, um, but I guess you know it doesn't align. It it's not wasn't a priority in the CARP. Um, it was listed but not listed as a priority, and because the CARP is all about reducing carbon, and it wasn't um, you know it, I, it wasn't identified as a as a town manager goal. Or so I think that that before we start moving down on the work plan, I think the council needs to say, you know, this is something we want to explore. And I'm not sure. I'm just sort of, sort of winding around a little bit here, um, because you know, if it's 
if it's about it, it's it, I don't think we're saying it's going to save money. I don't think we're saying it's going it's um because it's unlikely to save the it'll probably cost the town money. It's unlikely. It's un it's a question whether it it will help with our carbon action, but it's not a priority in terms under the CARP. It's listed, but it wasn't prioritized. So, you know, if the council wants to move in this direction, it'd be great. And I think you you would say okay. How are we going to do it? And I think you've got a great plan. I do appreciate the plan, but until but I think it's I would hesitate to add a, allocate staff resources if the council hasn't said yes, we want to do this as a broader group. Thank you, Paul. Shawnee. Hmm. Okay, so a couple of things that were raised here. One is the ECAC not listing it as a priority, and I don't think the CARP has listed, presented as a priority of anything for that matter, but it is there in there. It is. CARP. It is. So yeah. that's one thing. The second thing is when they, um, they have all publicly and officially supported this. So if they didn't think it was and important enough because they do know that anything they say yes to and vote for involves town staff time, council committees time. So my hope is that when they are voting to support any particular initiative, that they are giving it that due thought. Okay. And therefore, if they have said yes to it, then it is a priority. So as far as town council goals go, I think we're definitely going to advocate for that and will be put in our goals this year. And that being said, I don't think we should stop the process for because this is a it is going to like the as you can see from the plan itself, there's so many steps to it. So I do urge us to at least start with the process of, because Susan wait what we've heard is she already has a lot of commitments and she's getting booked. So if we don't get her now, if we don't apply now, we may not get her assistance. And doing it without her assistance just means more work for all of us. So I think that's one step whether we go ahead or we, we are going ahead in that direction. We know that the town council is going to support it. It is going to put it in the goals. So let's at least get that step going. Mm -hmm. And um and as far as the cost to the town, that's a speculation. We don't know mm -hmm. that. And so again, we need to do, and so we're not trying to force anything, but we want to start taking the steps that are needed to get more information and that can inform us to move in that direction and then work the timeline accordingly. So with that said, can we uh, get some commitment from you about the timeline for when this grant can be applied yeah. for? Yeah, no, the grant I think is fine. I, I think I've already said that, that, you know, that's something we can certainly pursue. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's be moving beyond that to all these other steps that you showed, you know, beyond that first page. Um, that was an e enormous amount of commitment of town staff. And I'm not sure if you're going to be appropriating, looking to how we're going to do that. What, what are we not going to do? Um, because, you know, just, and I don't want to be, I'm not trying, I, this is something that a lot of towns have done. There's evidence that it's a good thing. So I'm just saying, you, you know, we're doing a whole lot with our current DPW staff, especially who would be expected to do this. And I'm not sure who there would take this on, honestly. And Guilford can speak for his, himself, but um, we don't have people waiting for jobs to do but if, if you know if this is a grant that susan can take on and we don't really that would be awesome okay i'll call on andy and then afterwards just we have not heard from gilford so gilford if you have thoughts that you would like to share uh or would, whichever it please um do so uh after andy or whenever you see fit so um andy yes um I think that the point's already been made about, and we've already significant, sufficiently discussed the question of getting Susan Waite's assistance and that she would be helpful. Um, in the meantime, there are little pieces in there that we've actually been studying ourselves as co-sponsors and we can begin to transfer that knowledge and members of the committee may be willing to take on discrete pieces and I'll talk about one in particular. 
because it relates back to the staffing question that was talked about and that I've given some significant thought to. Um, and that is that uh, one of the towns that um, was listed, that's a Massachusetts community. And I think that the Massachusetts community are the most important to look at that Veronica, uh, Veronique Blanchard had mentioned was Arlington. And a lot of us know the town manager of Arlington have personal relationship with him. And through that, um, he steered me to a conversation with the staff person that um, works on um, managing their system. And what she basically said was that she's a part-time employee and that there are other, two other part-time employees are, are two other employees who allocate part of their time to the point that Arlington, which is a community about the size of Amherst, on an ongoing basis has one person working full-time to manage the system throughout. Um, and uh, if I assume that that um, is translatable information for us, that we um, might be able to get little pieces of assistance without a significant allocation of time as we begin the study, but it is going to become more complicated. And there is, based upon that experience, an ongoing need that is going to have to be um, taken care of. And the most likely places it would be taken care of is that um, since we're probably going to have to use the enterprise fund approach to funding this so that um, um, the people who are participating in the system as homeowners um, are going to uh, be paying into an enterprise fund, uh, we would probably have to build additional salary into the enterprise fund in order to um, support the staff time that's needed to administer the system. Now, that's just a very preliminary uh, observation. I may be entirely wrong in my conclusion, but at least I wanted to put it out there. Thank you, Andy. I wanted to give Gilford a chance to speak um, because he hasn't yet before going on to Jennifer and then Chalani again. Um, I really don't have much to say. Um, this has been talked about for quite a while. Um, I think the, it's been looked at before. It is at a point in time where looking at this might be a good thing to do. Um, it will take time and it, it requires us to, if we don't get additional personnel or funding to help us with this, it would require shifting from something to, to do this. We do have one person who could do it very well, but then he also must, he spends a good deal of his time working on the transfer station. Um, and even if we go this route, we'd probably keep the transfer station open because of the, some of the, uh, some of the intricacies and differences we are than other people. I mean, our waste system, we get a great deal of mattresses and a great deal of furniture at the end of, at twice a year at the end of uh, school semesters, which most communities don't get. Um, so we have some differences, but back to my point, uh, might be time to do it. If we go beyond what Susan's doing, there may need to be a, a shifting in what we do or funding to help get beyond, go to the next step. Thank you, Gilford. Okay, Jennifer, and then Shell. Uh, yeah, I, I did want to add that our community sponsors have also done, are really subject matter experts in this area. And they have done and can continue to do a lot of research and provide us a lot of data and you know comparisons and looking at what other communities in the state you know and beyond have done so i i hope that i that we can work with them and take full advantage of their expertise so that and that would relieve you know to some extent the sponsors and hopefully you know the staff uh, 
of a lot of the um, legwork and research and data collection that has to be done as we move forward. So, you know, I, I understand that tap staff time is allocated, you know, certainly for this fiscal year, but between if we are, you know, able to get the technical assistance grant and have Susan Waite from DEP work with us and work closely with our community sponsors and the, you know, the vast expertise and information and data they can provide and then the, you know, the sponsors working as well that we could, you know, make progress during this fiscal year and then look to having it be a goal for the town manager in the next year. Mm -hmm. Shall Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, I think one one step for us then the sponsors might be to separate out what is the town staff's responsibilities and what can the committee members do and I can obviously understand that not everyone's going to have time to devote to it, but I think we can all individually uh, look up other towns work with zero waste uh, and our resident sponsors and it will always be filtered through like there are many of us like Andy has a lot of experience and then I bring in a lot of research experience and uh, you know that objective lens. So we and then you know all of us are bringing this Alicia who brings in her own expertise and Jennifer so we can all bring in and pull in our expertise to assimil assimilate information and then uh, definitely separate out like what we are expecting from the staff so that Paul has a clearer sense of how much staff time and, and then just like, yeah, looking at other towns like Lexington right now is a thing moving in that direction. So we can collaborate, work with them in partnership, like as they're moving and we can share information with them and receive information. So um, I think that's all I wanted to say at this point. Um, but just as an action item for at least today and any other questions, of course, that the committee members have, uh, we can hear that out. But as an action item, I think um, if we can just say that we're going ahead with the grant for uh, the DEP grant and this, it, we can figure out the timeline or, it, I mean, that's, that's the only most urgent thing that we want to impress on. And then for us, we can figure out what is the town staff and like break down this table a bit more to see, uh, which was addressing Anna's question about, and out of that, what is, um, and then start doing individual research and compiling that so that we can then every meeting, we can present our research findings of this is what we have tackled and what we're looking at. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So I, I just, you know, on the staff, what I would ask you to do and encourage you is like, you're going to be setting goals for me in the next month or so, right? And so that would be a good time to say, council, is this a priority goal for us? And then that helps assess. And then, you know, with that goal, that's how I build the budget based on the town council's goals. Um, adding goal, the council has added goals mid-year. They did that a year ago. Um, and that's an option as well. But we're not mid-year. We're just, we're, we're right in the time when you're probably in the next couple months you're gonna be talking about goals so it's a good time to be getting the council to say is this is this what we think we want to do as a, as a council and i agree with you shali I, I i would think the council would support this right um and then it's up to up to me to say here's what we will need to begin working on this i mean the grant will help get us moving um but then it, it'll be like here's the cost of whatever we're doing to move this forward according to you know allocating staff or whatever resources we might need. I just try I'm, we've been working really hard to align our work plan with the council's goals and the budget. And so I just want to honor that that process that we've been establishing. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Anna. So I um this is really interesting to me because I think this is a new process for me on TSO, right? And I know that CRC has been working through a different type of work plan with the rental regs. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, I think I got a little bit of my, my concern raised when, um, and Shalini, this was not your intention, I know that, but when, we, when it was said that, you know, TSL will go and do research and then come back and do this and then come back. I think I'd really like clarity on what these next steps are because I don't know about all of y'all, but I don't, 
I don't have a lot of free hours to add more research in on, on a bill that I'm not bringing forward. And, and this is why I didn't sign on to this is because I didn't have time to, to engage fully in it. And so I want to respect, you know, all of our time. And so I'd really love some more clarity on, on what the expectations are for the use of time on the part of not just town staff, but on the part of the, the folks in TSO as well. Yeah, I, I would, um, I would second that as, as well. So, Shani, please. Yeah, I think I did say that not everyone in the TSO is going to be equally passionate and wanting to spend those hours on research. So it's more individually, the people who are uh, motivated to do this will do the research. And I think the onus is really on the, um, the sponsors who are bringing forward this um, and and at the same time, uh, I think what the what we're expecting or hoping from the committee is when we present the research and like in the packet that you have a chance hopefully to read it and see, you know, bring your lens and expertise, critical thinking and um, to the discussion items that when we present them and, you know, like to have a healthy discussion around, you know, especially if they're crossroads and what decisions we're making at every step. Yeah. Um, thank you. I, uh, so I just wanted to add to that. I, I don't want to speak for Anna, but I think that it's not a matter of passion. It's really a matter of just capacity. You know, um, I think that, you know, we all want to do our part. I want to speak for everybody to do our part to move forward and, and do what is right and best for the planet. But, um, yeah, I think that some of us are just backed against the wall. It's just a matter of just simply not having those extra five minutes to eat. Um, so, uh, but I'm sorry, Anna, you had your hand up and then I know there was Jennifer. You said exactly what I was going to say. It's not that I'm not motivated or interested. I am out of hours. Yeah. yeah. Happy to be, to be supportive, which way is possible. I just would, I would not want to say myself, I would have this time to commit to help and then not be able to come through uh, with that promise. Um, so I think it was Jennifer and then Andy and then back to Shalini. Just very quickly, yeah, I would not expect TSO members to, to take on, you know, really the research, you know, to take on the task of making this, this happen. That, and that's where I, you know, we have wonderful community sponsors, not to put it all on them either, but they've actually already done a lot of the research. Um, so yeah, we wouldn't um, anticipate, you know, asking you outside of the committee time to be doing, you know, any of the work on this. Thank you, Jennifer and Andy. Yeah, I mean, obviously in the work plan, we deliberately left the dates and the people assigned for um, steps off of the chart, just recognize the need to have those columns completed as we work along. And um, that's because of the reasons that have been uh, addressed today. And I, as a member of, you know, as a member of the committee and thinking of the committee as a whole, we've got a lot on our plate. And I just want to, uh, you know, we have to remember as a group that we were assigned two bylaws to look at on the same night. And we have not, um, to my knowledge, begun a similar process to start a conversation about the other one that was referred to us on lighting. Um, Anna was a co-sponsor on that, so she can speak to that more fully um, than, than I can. Um, we've talked a lot about um, various kinds of road problems from um, traffic to conditions of roads to speed um, about our relationship to TAC and what TAC's role is and this uh, committee's role is. Uh, I had a little bit of an exchange this liaison with uh, the TAC chair today. Um, and I just sort of acknowledged all of that because there wasn't much else that I uh, could do since I was not gonna be able to attend their meeting because of another conflict I had earlier um, in the day. Um, so, but we do have a lot on our plate. And so and I think that uh, we have to recognize it for ourselves and respect it for ourselves. And we have to 
ask our community to understand it too as we can uh, work out the timeline question but i do, don't have answers to them or if i had a if i could even suggest an answer i would have started that additional column <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think what's coming up again is what I was bringing up in the last meeting around having a process in the future someday in some council where we as committees, you know, start when we first form, like what is a process going to be of prioritizing because there's always that tension of individual counselors bringing forth bylaws and initiatives, which is great. We want that, right? We want passionate uh, counselors who are bringing forward meaningful proposals. And then how does that work with the rest of the committee who may or may not, like the rental registration is a perfect example. I am zero in rental registration. Where did that come from? And yet I'm actually the one doing the most detail community engagement going through thousands of pieces of information which is so rich with what's happening with the tenants what's happening there so all i'm saying is that you know we're going to find ourselves in that tug and pull where we may not want to and and in the absence of a formal process where we decide how are we going to prioritize based on our social justice goals environmental goals our economic vitality goals as a committee when these things are different coming in, is there a process we are bringing to prioritize that on a timeline? And right now, I don't see that. In my mind, there's a process, which is if there's anything related to safety, justice, um, environment, that comes first in my mind. And But we may not be on the same page and that's okay, but we need to have that conversation and maybe that needs to be on the agenda at some point. Like how do we bring our full hearts into the work that this committee is doing when we have slightly it's not that you're not passionate of course i know anna you you're absolutely passionate about the climate climate goals but again in terms of as a committee what are our goals and how do we prioritize that which is i'm proposing we can put that as a discussion item in the future agenda sure thank you sean and we do have um you know just ongoing and you know we'll talk about there we do have you know quite a list some of them do have to do with uh safety issues and some that andy has brought up just on our agendas going forward that we have um that was that we have referred and still pending from the, the council as well um but yeah so we can definitely oblige the conversation um or the discussion rather were there any other questions from anyone? Okay. All right, then uh, with that, um, if we could, Athena, with your help, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing attendees to be able to move into public comment. Um, I can help you call on folks once you open public comment, I'll look and see whose hand is up. All right, so with that, I would like to open public comment. Um, public comments and matters within the jurisdiction of the TSO committee. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to one, two, three minutes. So if we have anyone who would like to make public comment, would you please raise your hand now? Anika, is it okay if I call on folks yes, in the order that their hands are up? Why, yes, please. I don't know why I'm having trouble seeing like. Okay. The first I person. Can't, I just can't see the number or, or name. That's all right. Oh, Shalini? Just quickly, can we, yeah, can we just share that there are seven attendees and there are three hands up, just so people know what's happening. Thank you, Shalini. So the first person is Tracy Zafian. Go ahead, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, um, so I'm not actually going to speak on um, the item that you were just talking about, which I assume some of the other members of the public are, but I wanted to just um, comment briefly about the public hearing for next week that's on the parking, including for Lincoln and Sunset. So that's not my neighborhood, but I understand that there was like a leaflet that was put on people's cars about the upcoming hearing. It 
didn't have a name on it, but it basically had in big letters like parking ban, you know, Lincoln sunset, um, show up at the meeting, let the council know how you feel kind of thing. Um, and just, I don't know whether the TSO is still planning to do a flyer or not, as was talked about, but just, and I'm sure that anybody, you know, who knows town government would know, of course, this isn't an official town flyer, but just, you know, if questions come up or maybe if the council could put something out and just say like, that's not official, it is not a ban, it is restrictions, you know, with a focus on safety and that kind of thing with like additional information, because I'm expecting if people are leafleting like that and, I mean, maybe there will be more by next week as well, that, that there could be like a, you know, a group of people who are kind of stirred up by that type of rhetoric. So I just wanted to just bring that to the um, TSO's attention in case you hadn't seen the flyer or heard of that. So thanks. Thank you, Tracy. And, and if we could, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to Jennifer, um, are you are you happy to stay with us? I should have. Oh, ignored. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were, Is, okay. are, might we be coming back to the waste hauler? I think after, uh, you know, the, right. this public comment. I mean, if it's okay for me to stay. Talk, sure. You're welcome to stay with us. I think okay. we had concluded the, the presentation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. The next person okay. is Darcy Dumont. Go ahead, Darcy. Hi, um, I'm Darcy Dumont from South Amherst. Um, uh, I just wanted to say very briefly that I'm really excited that TSO is having, um, uh, you know, their first conversation about the work plan. And, you know, it's about one year from when it came up in TSO the last time. Um, but um, I'm hoping that, that it, can move forward that the that the request to have a DEP um, technical assistance grant can be parallel to having the discussions that you're going to have in TSO rather than waiting to do it because that could take a very long time. So um, I'm pretty sure that could be something that could be parallel to whatever you're doing for your discussions and TSO. And yes, we are, we're hoping that we can get a recommendation back to the council, um, you know, sometime like by mid-February. Um, anyway, and yes, we're all in for, you know, helping in whatever way we can. We, we have established this um, sustainable neighborhood team program and, have about five uh, 25 volunteers so far. We're, we're working on um, spreading that throughout Amherst and um, and sort of trying, our goal is to get somewhere around 70 volunteers. Um, so we're working on that uh, to try to help the town in doing outreach both for this and for other climate initiatives that the town, town might want to undertake. So um, thank you very much for working on this. I'm, I'm thrilled that we're moving forward. Thank you, Darcy Dumont. Do we have another comment? Uh, yes, there's one more person with their hand up. It's John Root. John Root, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I too want to thank the TSO for uh, considering uh, and doing taking the next step uh, in looking at the uh, uh, hauler uh, reform bylaw, which the town council has demonstrated as, as a body is, is definitely excited about. Uh, so I, I see a significant momentum here and it's very gratifying to see. I'm the former chair of the Recycling Refuse Management Committee. Uh, and uh, a number of years ago, uh, we uh, uh, devoted a lot of time and effort <laughs> to creating a solid waste master plan. And that plan uh, was accepted for consideration, but uh, nothing has, has uh, was done about it, about those uh, proposals. Now, this is the chance for us to actually move forward with them because the heart and soul of that uh, master plan was all about um, removing uh, uh, organic uh, matter, uh, uh, compostable matter from the waste stream 
uh, when uh, when dump trucks go down the road, 50% of what's in there is compostable. It's just unacceptable. It's just wrong. <laughs> we need to get it out of the waste stream. Um, and the um, also the uh, the part of the proposal that that uh, refers to pay as you throw and in incentivizes the reduction of waste, I think is a tremendous uh, 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 shift in public awareness because uh, it'll it'll really help educate people about the importance of the uh, of the three R's reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, it's not just the recycling. Uh, it'll, it'll really, I think, help to create an environmental ethos in town and a real pride, a, a community spirit as well. Uh, I've seen a, a tremendous amount of enthusiasm about this issue. Everyone uh, I, kn I know uh, wants to do the right thing. And I think a lot of us are aware that it's very difficult to do the right thing and that the town's responsibility is to make sure uh, that it to make it easier to and and to do what it takes. Uh, so I think that um, I, I see a tremendous possibility uh, in uh, in uh, both diverting um, you know diverting waste and thereby reducing our carbon footprint and also uh, helping to to mend some of the divisiveness in town that in, in town politics because I think everyone uh, regardless of their polit political stripe can get behind this. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for, for what you're doing. Thank you, Mr. Root. Okay. Any other public comment? No other hands, no other hands in the attendees. Okay. Uh, Shalini. Yeah, I think I just wanted to add one more piece to this uh, whole process that I'm super excited about. Um, that we heard about was the community engagement and education process. So every step of the way that we are moving forward, we're hoping that this is not just about composting and reducing waste, right? It's about the whole philosophy of how we are living our lives as consumers and about rethinking, do we really need to buy that and becoming more conscious as consumers? And I think I really also like that idea that we're really building something in the community together uh, that we are all behind. And so there's a lot of positive pieces. I know there are challenges and I understand, uh, you know, that's the technical part that we don't think about. And I thank you, Paul, for reminding us that, you know, the, the budget is allocated based on the town manager goals and all of that. So, you know, we're definitely going to bring this forward in our next round. So there's a budget for this planned out and we talk about that separately. But other than that, as a committee, as working with the residents, with our um, serial waste um, Amherst group and others, you know, we can continue this momentum that we've already built and move forward with that. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. Jennifer. Yeah, so since I'm, I'm not a member of TSO, I'm kind of asking this as, so the plan, as we, you know, start to work on it, can we amend it or fix it or add things, you know, even that there were some blank squares. So is, we would come back to the committee with, you know, to refining the plan, I guess is what I'm saying. If we want to, you know, there were even some suggestions made today for amending it, you know, adding some things to it now. And is that something we would do in the committee or come back to you or could we so what it would be the process for refining it as we you know start to move forward athena i was just about to refer to you before your hand popped up so you know paul <laughs> thanks for calling on me i um i'm i'm concerned about the idea of referring back to sponsors because if they're doing work outside a meeting and they're working as a group um, then that is that is unofficially creating a subcommittee. So we would need to find a way of doing this work within TSO or else designate some other type of working group if you're planning on doing work outside this committee. The other option is to assign work to individual members to bring back, um, and then you're not working as multiple members outside a meeting. Thank you, Athena. A clarifying question. So just for like maybe feedback on the plan, could Andy be the person to hold the document? And if any individuals have 
feedback, comments they provided to Andy and don't discuss amongst each, each other. Is that okay? Yes, so you can, um, like we sometimes do, one member collects feedback and then that feedback is shared at the next meeting right. and we make sure that that's posted online at the same time it's available to the rest of the members. Right. Yes. Andy, would that be acceptable to you that we send you our individual feedback on the work plan? Like I'm thinking, you know, already about separating out town staff duties versus individual counselor or not individual but our council duties and stuff so whatever feedback we have can we offer that to you go ahead Andy. um i can take on some of that role i do um have some concern that we not inadvertently slip into a situation where multiple people are trying to work together through one person, me or anyone else, and um, effectively becoming a subcommittee without becoming a subcommittee. So it really would have to be that I would get suggestions um, and then present them to the committee um, and might personally make recommendations if I was doing that, or if he gave it to Shalini, she would be doing the same thing. Um, but whichever way you go, um, it, what we're trying to do is avoid anything that creates a subcommittee or makes a group outside of uh, the TSO a group working together with official sanction, because at that point, um, it becomes an official town committee and has to post meetings and um, comply with all of the open meeting law requirements. At least that's why I understand uh, Athena is, of course, our expert on um, giving guidance on that, but that's my understanding. Thank you, Andy. Shalini? Yeah, I think that's uh, how we're doing it with the rental registration because there were many, many sponsors on that one. And I don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but the way it's happening is that Mandy Joe is the person that people are sending the edits to the live document and then she incorporates those and then updates it and makes it public. Am I right in my understanding, Athena? Yes, I believe so. Okay. All right, so last call. Any other questions or comments regarding universal methods? Okay. All right, so we will move on. Now, Jennifer, would you, are you going to stay with us? We're saying good night. I'm sorry, I'll go into the audience. Okay. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Okay, Thank you. Stay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Okay, so we actually do not have town manager appointments tonight. Okay. We that, did like 20 of them last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last okay. week. And we've approved the minutes, so we're on to announcements. Does anyone have an announcement to make? No? Well, I went, I don't know if you all can see this, I went to see an ex exhibit that was uh, Amherst community and actually Springfield residents led called Voices of Resilience about um, it's an intersection of women on the move with a common space being Ellis Island that was quite nice and it goes until uh, um, October 15th I believe just on uh, Saturday Sundays and Wednesday so um, so that was quite interesting I would recommend it and uh, so, and then moving on, our next agenda, I think we know that next week on the 13th that we have our hearings for uh, Hope Church on Gaylord Street and then Lincoln Avenue, Sunset Avenue and Elm Street. So that will be starting at 7 p.m. and 7.15 respectively. Oh, Andy. Yeah, and, and regarding that, uh, we heard one suggest uh, person reporting to us through public comment that um, there may have been flyers put on cars. I was wondering if we uh, have any confirmation that that was not done by anyone from the town 
or whether, because we did talk about that at one point as being a desired step to take to make sure that people who were parking on the street would get to, uh, would be informed. Athena? Uh, the town has not leafleted cars, so those are coming from individuals, not not uh, affiliated with the town staff. I did post the um, the hearings on the town bulletin board as required, and uh, they've been published in the Gazette. Uh, this the they're in the Gazette on the sixth, and they will be again on the thirteenth, and I'm sorry, the previous Thursday the 29th and the 6th, um, and, um, but no, no flyers or, or anything like that. Thank you, Athena. Paul? Yeah, just to add on to what Athena said, there was a, a counselor who asked that staff leaflet cars, and after having some discussions, um, especially with Athena, who felt like doing it for this, um, this hearing, would be inconsistent with how we've addressed every other hearing. Um, and so we tried, we're tried. we trying to be, um, treat every hearing and every parking change the same. Okay, thank you, Paul. So we, we do not have items that have been, that were not anticipated with uh, 48 hours. So I guess, wow. So we are having a little bit of an early evening for TSO tonight. All right, um, do I need to have a vote? We're just to adjourn the, or adjourn the meeting and say good night. You get to declare us adjourned. I declare us adjourned. Yay. Well, good night, everyone. Thank you, Anika. Bye-bye. Thank, yeah. Thank you for your awesome meeting.